Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at the internal construction and operation of an internal gear oil pump. This is a crescent type internal gear oil pump. When you look at the components of uh, the oil pumps that are visible from the external, right here we have a drive gear that is attached to the crankshaft. So when the engine is started, it will be rotated by the crankshaft so that the oil pump will function. Right here we have a relief, relief pressure relief valve. Here we have a pressure relief valve. And this as a unit is a valve body. The entire unit is a valve body. And then we have connection pipes coming to the inlet side and the outlet side. This will get connected to the engine oil circuit. When we look at the internal construction of the oil pump, we can open this. It's already partly opened. Let's disconnect this and see the internal. This is the internal construction. Right here we have a gear that is meshed with the outer gear. And right here we have the crescent. Now in order to determine which one is the inlet and which one is the outlet side, let's put it together and uh, determine which is which. When it will be assembled, it will be assembled in such a manner. As I have already mentioned, this is a pressure relief valve. If you open this, there is a spring-loaded valve. Well, for this particular oil pump, a spring is missing. But if you open this, there is a spring-loaded valve right in here. This is a spring-loaded valve that will be controlling the output pressure of the oil pump. Now, when you follow this line, if I insert this pin right in here, see, it will come out right here. So this will be the high pressure side, the outlet side. When pressure is extremely high, it will push this valve and then some of the oil will return back to the inlet side. So this is how we can identify which one is the inlet and which one is the outlet. So this valve will be seated in such a manner with the spring on the back and then this tap on the back side. It will be sitting in such a manner when the pressure of the oil is extremely high, it will open this and then when this opens, the outlet can leak some oil back to the inlet side. So now from this, we have determined that this is the outlet side, whereas this is the inlet side. This is a very simple method of identifying the inlet and the outlet. So once we have identified the inlet and the outlet, now let's proceed to discussing about the operating principle of this internal gear type oil pump. As you can see, the outlet and the inlet they are separated by this wall. And if you look deep in there, this is connected to one of the pipes, one of these pipes, and the other one is connected to one of the pipes. See, on the back side, when you look at the back side, these lines, they take oil. One is for the inlet side, and one will be for the outlet side. Oil will be sucked in through one, and it will be discharged through the other line. So one line is going to the oil strainer, which is connected to the inlet, and one line is going to the oil filter and uh, the oil gallery, the output side. So this is how the internal construction of this housing. Now let's focus on the operation of this main pump. Now when it is connected in such a fashion, looking at here, this will be the output side because it is connected to here, and this will be the suction side. Now let's see how they operate. So if this is the suction side, it means this gear is rotated this way. This is the correct direction of rotation. Now, the inlet and the outlet, they are separated by this crescent. The crescent is the one boundary that separates the inlet side from the outlet side. This type of internal gear pumps, they are operated by mesh and unmesh of the teeth. When gear is meshing together, that will create pressure. When gears are unmeshing, when they are opening, that will cause low pressure. Suction will be generated. So the crescent separates the inlet and the outlet. Oil is trapped between the teeth. Oil will be trapped between the teeth on the inlet side. Oil will be squeezed out of the teeth. Out of the gap between the teeth, oil will be squeezed out on the outlet or the discharge side. 
Let's consider one gear and see what happens. Look at these two teeth, for example. On the inner rotor side, let's see these two teeth. Now there is a closed gap between these two. There is an outer gear teeth, so there is no gap between these two that can accommodate engine oil. Let's see what will happen if I rotate it in the normal direction of rotation. Just look at the colored T's as I rotate it. Now when this is rotated, look, now gap is splitting up. As you can see when I rotate it, previously there was no gap, now gap is opening. Some gap is opening up as I continue rotating the gear, further rotation will increase the gap. Look, as I rotate, now previously there was no gap between these two, now we have a wider gap. So the gears are unmeshing. Unmeshing means it's opening up. Now this empty space, which was previously occupied by these days, will now suck in fresh oil into this cavity. Now, as we further travel, that gap will open even wider. See, the gap is even opening wider. As we travel, it will open wider. Now, this cavity, the entire cavity is filled with incoming oil. That oil will be carried by the teeth. Look, when it meets the crescent, that oil will be trapped in between here. There are oils in almost all of this gap that is will trap oil and oil will be carried through these gaps through here let's focus our attention on what is going on in this gap that oil will be transferred from the inlet side to the outlet side remember there is almost no gap between the crescent and the teeth there is no possibility of oil going back that oil will get transported and then it will come to the discharge side. Now look what will happen to the discharge side. Oil is filled from the suction side. Oil is being pushed. Pushed and it will accumulate in this discharge side. Now what will happen when it travel further? Further travel of this oil pump gear will now start to reduce the gap between the teeth. Previously there was a wide gap. Now look what is happening to the oil that was trapped in here. Look, as I move it further, one gear will start moving into that space. Oil is trapped in here. Gear is going into that cavity. So that will, rip, that will squeeze the oil out from that gap. Volume is decreasing. As you can see, oil is being squeezed out of that cavity. And that squeezed oil will be discharged as a high pressure oil. That oil will be pushed in here and then it will distribute to the engine oil gallery. So this is how the internal gear type operates. So the internal gear type operates by demeshing and meshing of the gears. When gears are demeshing, when they are opening up, oil will be sucked into that cavity and as the oil pump moves to the discharge side, the gear that was previously opened wide will start to come together. They will go to mesh that will reduce volume. So here we have unmeshing. Right here we have meshing of the teeth. That will cause suction on the inlet side. And then due to that squeezing of the oil, it will cause oil discharge from the outlet side. So with this, we have a continuous supply of oil. As far as the gear pump is driven at, at speed, we have a continuous supply of oil. So this is one advantage of having this type of oil pumps. We have a continuous supply of oil as these gears are coming one after the other. So this is how the internal gear type oil pump operates. When the oil is extremely high, when the oil pressure is extremely large, there is a relief valve that is connected to the inlet side that will open up and the high pressure oil will come back to the inlet side. That way we can maintain the output of the oil pump. So the output of the oil pump is dependent on the spring tension that is acting on the valve here. The amount of spring force 
will determine the output pressure. If you are using tough spring to press this valve onto the seat, you will have higher output pressure. But if there is weak spring pushing this valve to this side, we will have lower pressure. So this is how this crescent type internal gear type oil pump operates. So this is how the oil gets pumped onto the oil gear. So dear viewers, this is basically simple demonstration showing how crescent type oil pump operates. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Till then, stay safe.